Hey guys, so we're doing something a little different today. Um, that being, we are going to brew a beer down at the creek at the end of my property. And we're gonna do it over a fire with creek water. And it's probably gonna be real weird. And we're also gonna ferment it down at the creek in a corny keg. So everything's pretty much been hiked down already. I'm just bringing a lot of beer and the ingredients. And yeah, we're gonna do this crazy thing. I don't know how it'll work. Honestly, I gotta go back to LA really soon. So, you know, you have to do one big bang thing before you leave. So I'll show you guys the path down to the creek. So one of the fun things we're going to do for this beer is we're actually going to use the water from this year long running stream on our property. And so basically the reason people tell you not to drink out of streams is because there's bacteria in it that you want to boil off before you drink it. So obviously beer works really well for that. Um, hence why people used to drink beer as water when the water wasn't safe. So we're going to grab six gallons of water from this creek and start to heat up for our mash. So we've got our creek water in our kettle and um, we are going to stick it right on the fire to get it up to strike temperature, which is 157 degrees, and then pull it off, mash in, do the whole mash, just kind of where it is now. And then we're going to lay some rebar um, and basically bring it up to boil and boil it on the rebar on the fire over the coals. So we're just sticking it right on top of these logs? Yeah. Okay. It's not gonna collapse. Okay, so this is now at 157, um, which is our strike temperature. We're gonna do another 152 mash temp. Um, so we've got nine pounds of two row, one pound of white wheat, and four ounces of caramel 60 that's gonna go in this. We're gonna just ha have a really simple IPA today um, with a bunch of mosaic and cascade. Uh, our cascade is actually hemp infused, so I thought it was a little appropriate that we do backyard, uh, backwoods brew with uh, some hemp cascade. Ah. That's what I was worried about. Been worried. How close are we to one Very close. Three level. Well, are we there? If we're there I'm gonna we need I'm gonna see. If we're there, we're good. Did you cut that on the It got it on that. <laughs> oh, we're way beyond there. We need to add a little bit of water. There's so much soot in this. It's gonna soot? Yeah. Okay, so we are at 157 exactly. Um so got some relatively dirty water here from the creek, but I'm unconcerned. I have a strong feeling that it will all settle out with the troop um, during fermentation. So whatever, it's gonna get boiled anyway. So why would we worry about Giardia or anything? Okay, so we have nine pounds of Tiro, one pound of white wheat and four ounces of Caramel 60 to make our IPA. And we're going to mash in. Uh, this is going to be a 45 minute mash. Um, just because, you know, we're in the woods. So it's not like we have the comforts of home here. Except we do have a massive cooler of beer. So we're going to be just fine. So our strike temp was 157. We're hoping for a mash temp of 152. And we've got just around six gallons for this, a little over six gallons, because um, we're gonna make a four gallon batch. We're going to ferment this in a corny keg. So you can't go all the way up to a five gallon or you know, you're gonna explode it everywhere. Um, and you know, we're leaving it down here. So 
it's not like we're gonna be able to have an eye on it all the time. So we're gonna come down, check it about once a day. There's a very steep hill to get down here. So, uh, you know, the less you can check it, the better, and the less paranoid you can be about it, the better. So we are at 151. Um, I'm gonna take that and cover it and call it a day. All right, so we're gonna set a timer for 45 minutes and meet you back here to mash out. And drink beer. And drink beer. So we've made a good ghillie suit for our mash tun to help insulate it. I usually don't insulate this one at all. So I don't know, our temperature might actually drop less than it usually does when we're up at the house. So it's been 45 minutes and we're gonna pull our malt now. Um, so we're just gonna use a log we found in the forest um, to wrap it all up. And we're gonna do the same squeeze thing that we have been doing forever, so whatever. Hopefully this um, kind of maintained a consistent temperature. We're gonna see if the moss actually helps. <laughs> it's weird to have moss that's not Irish moss in your beer. Perfect. This is gonna be a challenge getting it off without getting moss all over it. Please don't get it in the fire, it's gonna create smoke. All right. Whoa, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Thank you, Cindy. Okay. Alrighty. If it fits, it ships. Nice. No, oh, there's so much dirt on that. Kind of dirty. <laughs> we'll keep it over here. It's just the end that's dirty. Okay. All right. To the middle. Actually, we can probably roll it there. Good. If you think, I don't know. You tell me. I got yelled at. <laughs> keep the stick not over the pot, just in case you're knocking bark and shit. Man. It's really hard to hold oh, it. Wow, though. This is working nice. This is a nice grip to it. Yeah, right. Oh, push against the side of the pot method. Well, I'm trying not to lose a bunch of shit. You want to unroll and? And I think we can just scooch if you can. That's that's pretty good. It is nice to have this much grip though. It is. And not like be rectangular. It's ergo. Yeah, this is very ergodynamic. Uh, you know, we're we're doing the ergodynamic uh, malt uh, squeeze, so this is really hot. <laughs> oh, I didn't even check what temperature it was. So it looks like the moss did not help us. I mean, you live and you learn. It is cool. We dropped down to less than 140 somehow doesn't seem right but you know I, mean, I am taking the temperature a little late in the game so whatever so we need about five I don't know where the magnet is all right where are we so we're at we've already got five and a half out of this already so I mean this is, is probably gonna boil a lot alder flavored hemp infused beer very natural all natural. That's what we should call it. All natural. I'm a little distracted right now. Okay. Do you want to hold it up and twist it around? Man. Hey. More? I don't think so. Okay. You know what I would do? Is just hang this somewhere. Yeah, let's do it. And then try again? Fluff it and try again? Yeah. Cindy's boss. If we destroy oh the bag. Oh my god, that's hot. Yep. That is hot. Yes. Look at my hands. <laughs> hey, brewmaster, that's a hot beer. <laughs> there it is. Nice. <laughs> I know it hurts. <laughs> That's more beer, though. We Remember should have that. brought clean gloves. Okay. That's way more than we normally get. 
She's like, I don't want to strain this out when I'm trying to make dog biscuits. <laughs> I want the best dog biscuits ever. Okay. Okay. We should hang this up somewhere so it'll dry. So we've got just less than six gallons somehow, which is fucking crazy. I'm gonna take my pre-boil gravity reading. Um, so our pre-boil volume was not supposed to be this high. I don't know if my calculators are gonna work out here because they're web-based. Um, so our pre-boil volume was supposed to be 4.83 gallons instead of six. <laughs> So we have a lot to boil off, um, yeah. And our pre-boil uh, gravity was supposed to be 1.059. And we're, we're low. Um, so we are at around 12 and a half. It doesn't wanna work because I'm offline. Okay, so you know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna try to trust the specific gravity that's in the refractometer which means we're at 1.05. So we only have 0 0.009 to go to hit our original gravity, and we've got a fucking gallon more than we actually need. So this actually might end up being one of those super heavy hitting beers again. What are we doing? <laughs> you know, it's that squeeze method that really does it, I think. Um, okay, so we're gonna throw this on the fire. We've got our rebar set up uh, over some coals and yeah, should boil really quickly, honestly. It didn't take much time at all to get this up to mash temp. Put down your beer. Alrighty. Perfect. You know, for dropping that low, it was a pretty good original or uh, pre-boil gravity. Yeah, we're at 140. So the only thing I'm actually worried about is getting a lot of smoke in this beer, but we're doing it over coals right now. So it doesn't seem like that'll really be a problem. Um, but you know, we're just gonna have to kind of figure that out as we go. And hopefully this boils quickly. Who knows? So we're, uh now hot breaking so we've got to wait a half an hour to add our first hop addition which is mosaic and i believe it's one ounce um so yeah uh we've got a lot of work to boil off still um it looks like we're probably at about five and a half gallons right now um but you know it took almost no time to get to boiling so i think it's gonna boil pretty damn well and I mean it looks like we've got an uneven boil going because there's more fire on the left hand side your left hand side than mine um but yeah um we might explode who knows I don't know what's happening ah! <laughs> oh man we got we it's it, we, we gotta be be careful here well kick that where's the spark I think it's gonna be good as long as yeah, it kick that 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 one piece out of there or get some gloves ready too that'll help a lot. It looks like it already instantly helped there. Yep. I just knocked You're a good. couple of them You're out. You're good. Right? That made a big difference. Okay, so we are going to add in our one ounce of mosaic. We're at the 30 minute mark. Um, and then our next one is at the 20 minute mark. So Northwest Hop Farm sent me this hemp infused cascade and they also sent me some mosaic that I'm using. Um, so super stoked to try this. It's super green. Um, all right. Green. Green. <laughs> Weed. <laughs> all right, so I'm just throwing this in my hot bag, like always. Except it's connected to other things right now, so it's gonna be a pain in the ass. All right, it's in there. Okie dokie, so I'm gonna set a timer for 25 minutes and meet you guys back here. So it's our five minute edition. We're doing two ounces of each, the hemp infused cascade and the mosaic from Northwest Hop Farms out of British Columbia, which I know a lot of my viewers are actually from, which is rad. I gotta make it up there one time. Um, we're also gonna throw in our Werfelock and some yeast nutrient. And I'm gonna uh, throw the Werfelock just in the boil so it's utilized well. 
And then the hops in the bag and the yeast nutrient also just kind of in there. Just a sprinkle. Blah! Of course, this got twisted. Make my life harder. There we go. Yeah, it's twisted up this time. There you go. Okay, so this is our last hop edition, and we should actually throw the chiller in it as well so we can sanitize it all up before we want to start chilling. We're going to use a drill pump to actually pump some of the creek water through the. I'm getting smoked out. Ugh! Say white, rabbit. white rabbit, white rabbit, white rabbit. Um, so we're gonna use the drill pump to pump water from the creek through the immersion chiller. <laughs> Downfall of doing the forest. There you go. Now you're all set. Now okay, so we're throwing that in and I'm trying not to get my face in the smoke again. Okay, so our boil is up and we are going to just rest it in the river and then use our drill pump to pump creek water through it and chill it as fast as we can. Wow. That's deep hole. It's deep. I think it might be too deep. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, 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 you don't need it. Let me just pull some up with the, uh, Know that that's gonna be so I deep. know it didn't seem that deep. Can tell. Nice. Here, careful with your hands. It's, it's not even hot. Oh. Okay, perfect. Ish. What we're gonna do is hook up what's called a drill pump, which is basically a pump that's run by your like drill, obviously, um, and we're gonna push the creek water through the immersion chiller to chill this beer down as quick as we can with it. And that's all she wrote. Nice. Oh, it's warm. I would hope so. Where's the thermometer? That's a good sign. So our bricks turned out to be 16, which is around 1.063, it looks like, based on this guy. Um, but that's about what we wanted. So our goal was 1.067, which my refractometer usually reads a little low on the brick scale. So I think we may have actually reached it. Um, this might actually be like a perfectly done beer. <laughs> First time ever. <laughs> Is it still warm? It's cold. Yeah, it's not taking out that much, but if you feel it compared to the other, oh, I bet, yeah. you can do it on a lower setting too and it'll warm up a bit more. Yeah. All right, Sean. You got, got it? it? Yep. All righty. Perfect. Wow. Looky there. All right, we gotta sanitize the spigot since it's been in Giardia country. Sanitize this tube, especially now that I got dirt all over yeah. me. All right, let's hit it. Go time. Hit it up, saw Blue Cantrell. Incoming. Woo! Ooh, <laughs> smells so good. Okay, so the plan for this is we're gonna ferment it for the first like three days with a blow-up tube connected to the gas in valve um, just into a container of water and then we're going to pull the blow off and let it ferment under pressure for probably another four days and then come back and check it and see if we can drink it. There's a floating dip tube in here so I'm not concerned about the true but basically I think we can actually just drink it off the fermenter which is kind of a novel idea but who knows i gotta leave like 
really soon. So I'm hoping this uh, ferments pretty quickly and turns out well, quick, I guess. Yeah. Did they make a pressure? Um, uh, like a, they make a, something called a spunding valve. That goes on the... It goes on the, um, like the gas out and you can set a pressure. Nice. So I think I'm going to get one. Release? It, yeah, it keeps a constant pressure. Oh, that would be freaking amazing. Yeah, so I, until I start, I should have like done the research a long time ago, but until I did the research, I didn't really fully know about it. So I was like, fuck, it's too like late anyway in the game to get one. Oh, well. But I think that's a good idea for the next time. I think we're learning. <laughs> it's super we're, cool. Yeah. Just, just the fact that we're trying something fun and... You know, Look how clear it is going into I there. Agree. It was beautiful. Just when we were finished uh, cooling it off. It was, there you go. There I go. I got it. It's fine. Okay, so our original gravity looks like it is 16.8 bricks, which is looking like 1.065. Our estimated was 1.067. We're right at four gallons. We hit that spot on. That is awesome. Yeah, good for us. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and pitch my yeast. We've got our second generation Nottingham ale yeast. Um, we made a starter that was a thousand milliliters. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't fit the thousand milliliters fully in the mason jar, but you know, it's a four gallon batch, so we don't even need it all. So I'm just gonna pour it right in. Goodbye. Ah, uh, there's still stuff. That's probably just true, though. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, man, we're... <clears throat> There's still a little bit left in here, but I don't think it matters. Nah. We don't need it. It's probably all, like, sediment anyway. All right, so we're just going to throw our cap back on. And then can I have the... Oh, we got to dig a hole now. We're going to bury this. Okay, so we're gonna dig a hole and bury this. Um, it's gonna get probably in the 70s and we would like it to ideally ferment around 60 degrees. Um, so, you know, the ground is always way cooler, around 50 degrees um, and consistent. That's what we're looking for is consistency. So I'm gonna grab a shovel and dig a hole, basically. And then we're gonna attach the blow off tube to the gas out and make a little airlock. Said it, sir. Oh my days. Oh my days. Like in other All words. my days. Yep. This is not easy to fucking dig in. You gotta say it slower though. Oh All my everyone. days. Cindy, you're my only hope. Here, I'll help you. Oh, I'm in trouble too. I could just tell. I'm in trouble. I thought I was not in trouble, but I am. If you need a bear, it's under the gum tree. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> the solace under the gum tree. <laughs> Actually, what is this? Maple. Maple, Staple IPA under the maple. Staple under the maple. It's just yell names at her. If just... you need a bell, it's just under the gum tray. <laughs> okay, she might be drunk <laughs> at this point. <laughs> All right, switch off to Sean. All right, I didn't get anywhere. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw in my dry hops. Uh, we basically just buried it. And, you know, I don't wanna come down here and risk recontaminating it after today. Um, so we're gonna throw in the dry hops. Hopefully the yeast and hops will play well together and it'll give us a nice juicy IPA. Um, so just gonna pull this. Uh, it's super foamy in here already, which looks good. So, I mean, hopefully these don't clog my dip tube, but you know, we uh, 
only brought one hot bag down, so, oh well. <laughs> Um, and now I'm going to attach our blow-off tube. This is sanitizer, obviously. Um, and I need my tube. Oh, yeah. Sean coming in with the hot tubes. So I'm just going to go ahead and sanitize this guy as well. So this is going into my gas in valve and then just straight into the... Uh, this jar of peppers. <laughs> all right. All right, so that's all sealed and this is all good. So uh, we drilled a hole. <laughs> we drilled a hole so that it fits really tightly so it's not gonna just fall out, but uh, the lid cracked, so, you know, the gas is still going to be able to escape, and it should all work, and I'm just going to sit this, like, right here, hide it from any people hiking around, and hopefully in a week I can come back and drink this beer just right off of this keg, and hopefully it's cold enough. Uh, I think that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Okay, so I am going to pull this blow off tube and then we're going to let it hopefully carbonate on its own. And that's it. Do you need your hops right now, too? No. Yeah, Have you the, ever brewed before? The warp. I fucking know what you're doing. <laughs> oh no, I sunk. It's not Sarah to make it seem so chill. I've been doing this. We're so chill. <laughs> Nobody's been murdered yet. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh goodness. That anyway. Good, man. Just so you know, I'm rolling on this one and this one. I don't know why. Good. B roll, bitch. You're a B roll, bitch. What is the B roll? B roll is what you cut. Us up on this shit. You use it to cut between scenes. B roll, so like, bitch, is go going in the bloopers. To the next. I don't want to wait. Oh, I don't want to miss a thing. The song from Amherst. I need a knife. Wow. Wow. Go. I'm not good at that. A little bit of thumb, a little bit of wrist. I just did it. Wow, that, that... Oh, wait, but now you gotta do it again so you're talking. One more time. Oh my god. That's why I read it at the second time. I keep a straight face, okay? Hold. I'm gonna redo it. Hey, really? Baron Swear to God. Everybody turn around. I'm so annoyed. Everyone turn Guys are so annoying. <laughs> now I can't do it. <laughs> oh my god, Sarah, pull it together. You pull it together! <laughs> okay, so it's been 25 minutes, um, and so we're at our five minute edition. We are doing... I rubbed it off. Where's my notebook? Anyway, so we are also going to do the that thing. Oh god, this is so uncomfortable. I can't see, guys. Sarah, how deep? Put her butt to sleep. <laughs> you knew I wanted to say it. Oh,